I'm a mop. Mike Tyson, like Muhammad Ali, transcends the sport of boxing. You, you, like when you were a kid, Dynamite on Sports Illustrated. I'll never forget that man. That was a, that your era from like you know the, the 80s, the late 80s. That era, like, it was a big part of my youth. But then you came around. When you came around, all of a sudden, everybody's watching heavyweight boxing. No socks, black shoes, all business. Talk about let's get it on. It, heavyweight boxing wasn't, it wasn't boring again. It was the, the most crazy, exciting thing in sports. Because I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be 20 years old to be that fucking famous. It was a trip. Who, who can handle that? Is any, can anybody handle that? No, it was a trip, but it was just what custom model, you know, that was his blueprint to make me right. a teenage superstar. Does it seem like a dream? Yeah, pretty much like a blur. Yes, met me. I'm a little kid. He said, you'll be the world champ. You have this guy know that I did I didn't know I was the one. Well, you were a specimen. Things more than that to be a fighter. If I go, you got to go. Somebody got to die. Let the gunshots blow. Somebody got to die. I go to this punch club. This is day one. Why those freaks? Give a little movement. Keep those hands. Obviously, Mike Tyson was a super athlete when he was young. You would go to pay, you'd pay to see his fights just to watch him fuck somebody up. It wasn't a fight. It was an execution. You would watch him execute guys. And then he came along and just started blasting the first people. Time Spinks has ever been down in a professional fight. He was the fucking king of the world. He was in his 20s. He was buck wild. Let the gun shots blow. Somebody got to die. And he's down again and in serious trouble. A right hand right on the chin. It was a different thing. Yeah, he just came a into the thing. ring. Yeah, we've he... never seen a boxer like him before. Tyson, when I first had him, he was 190 pounds, nothing but muscle, 12 years old. Okay, that's what he was. <laughs> but that's what he was. I mean, that's what God made right. him. It was the great boxing trainer, Gus D'Amato, who finally turned Mike's life around, took him under his wing and rechanneled Mike's energies into boxing. D'Amato feels that Tyson will be the next Muhammad Ali. He should know. Ali was also one of his students. Because, in my opinion, the mind and emotions are about 75% of boxing. It was a great American success story. A street kid who fought his way out of poverty to astounding fame and fortune. His seasoned eye for talent has spotted a fresh up-and-coming young heavyweight named Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, weighing 210 pounds, has an ex exceptionally good record in the Junior Olympic Championship, and he knocked out every fighter he fought. <laughs> to win the national championship twice, and has the most important quality, the will to win. He has the desire to win. He That's wants to be the best. Oh, oh and there it's 15 all. 15 years old. I think we should all remember that name. Mike Tyson. Was fighting for money. Everybody would bring other kids from different neighborhoods around to fight me for money. No, but at a young age, I, I was really experienced at a young age. I knew what was happening. Like, I'm saying I'm 10 years old. I knew what time it was. I, I knew what it was like to, um, to hear people scream in the middle of the night or getting the mugged. I, heard, I saw people get shot. I heard my mother get f***ed a lot. So I knew about the world. It wasn't like I was stupid from the world perspective. I knew what time it was. I knew not to go there. Everyone knows the story, but if you don't, he was basically had no love in his life mm -hmm. until he met Customato. Okay, be careful so here. you talk about all the negative shit, right? Yeah, that's what all about I know. the positive shit? I don't know that. Tell me. What happened? Tell me Come something on, something about, positive. What that's happened? bullshit. That's what, bullshit. What, no, something. fuck you. You don't no, know bullshit. You don't know me. Something positive happened. What, I went, I went to fucking, what, I went to fucking free lunch, nigga? You didn't connect with anybody? You didn't connect with another human being? You didn't feel the warmth of another human being or the love or the friendship or you didn't have... Uh, Not uh, then. 
Mike was arrested 38 times while he was a teenager. But this was before boxing legend Cus D'Amato came into the picture and channeled Tyson's anger Mostly it just changed my life because he helped me to deal with people. I know how to deal with people now. Before, I just couldn't, I couldn't talk to people. I used to always want to be alone. I, and now I learned how to deal with anyone. I could talk to anyone, even about their problems. And it's like a father and son relationship. You know, even though he is my manager and trainer, sometimes I forget that because of the way we are. The first day he even met me, the first day he met me, he took me in his house. He didn't even know me. I can say honestly, I have a very deep affection for him. I do. To me, he's my boy. He's with me. If he weren't here, I probably wouldn't be alive today. The fact that he is here and doing what he's doing, and doing as well as, in, as he's doing, and improving as he has, gives me the motivation and interest to stay alive. Because I believe that a person dies when he no longer wants to live. But I have a reason with, with Mike here. And he gives me the motivation. I will stay alive, and I will watch him become a success. Because I will not leave until that happens. Tyson's debut was against an unknown opponent named Hector Mercedes. Off with in the white trunks against Hector Mercedes. We're in the Plaza Convention Center, Albany, and this is not going to take too long. We're in round one. Mercedes already in trouble. He is going down, is he? These big swing. Mike Tyson is just a, 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 just a phenom, a thing that we had never seen before. Impressive professional debut from the man who so nearly went to the Olympics in Los Angeles last year. He didn't, he's decided to turn pro instead. Well, we saw Mike Tyson's professional debut, hard to believe it's just about a month ago. He was the pit bull with no leash that respected one person. Yes. And anybody else at any given time feared the fuck out of this pit bull. Go <laughs> Singleton again, left up this time. This boy is tough. And it was well done. Two fights, two wins for Tyson. Tyson's first two opponents were not very skilled boxers and gave him the confidence he needed to progress. His third fight against Don Halton, a more experienced boxer, was his first real challenge. We know from what we've seen so far, he is not a fighter who throws a lot of jabs. He likes to work in close, just puts out a little left feeler, and then comes in swinging behind that. Slow and much more measured than Tyson. And Albany to my good right hand, Alpin down. Back to the left hook that drives him across the ring. The fight was over then. Bang! Customado um, would watch me for like. He didn't let me box, he was just talking to me for like two or three weeks about fighting and the psychology of fighting. And what fighting was truly about, fighting was wasn't nothing physical, it was all spiritual. The mind is not in your way. And something's distracting you. You have the chance to change your life, your family's life. You could be something very special. Don't you want to be champion? You could be champion of the world. And I, I didn't pay no attention to it. He said, really? You could be champion of the world. You could devastate the world. I looked at this guy, and then I started thinking. He said, you do what I tell you to do, and if it doesn't work, then, then you could leave. So I said, okay, bet. I turned my whole life over to boxing. I turned into a, a complete animal. I turned into a disciplinarian. This guy had me um, clean my room. He had me just, he just had me, he, this guy brainwashed me so much that if he told me to, he was, if he told me to bite, I bite. If he told me anything, I was like his, his, his dog. He, he had me, she broke me down. He broke me down and rebuilt me. I was just like a totally different person. Move your head. Keep, keep the head down when you come up with the H. Keep your head down. It's coming up. Yeah, I mean, it's not coming up, but it's starting to come up. You can make it perfect. It's good, but it's not perfect. Just after Tyson had burst onto the professional scene, Cus D'Amato passed away due to pneumonia. It was a complete shock to Mike Tyson. He didn't know Cus was sick at the time. It was kept secret from him to keep him focused. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Big Apple of New York City, Mike Tyson. Legendary trainer Cus D'Amato was the only real father figure Mike Tyson ever knew. Thank 
can find some fights for him. Left hand almost drove Richardson right through the canvas. And now goes to 11 and 0 with 11 knockouts. Tyson ran through every annihilating opponents one by one. Being famous, you have to give up a lot of things and sacrifice, and I can't live like a 19-year-old, you know? By June 1986, Mike Tyson had fought 22 times in 15 months since turning pro and had captivated the boxing world with his talent for first-round knockouts. Customato, a key figure in Tyson's boxing career, had passed away, and the trusted managerial team were undergoing significant changes. At this stage, Don King joined the winning team as the promoter, this moment would prove to be life-changing for Tyson. Fight 23 against William Hosea was Tyson's last as a teenager. Tyson was drawing closer to a heavyweight championship fight. But little did he know, the fights inside the ring were only half the battle to come. Before facing his biggest demons outside the ring, he had to take care of Cus's wish first, become champion. The undefeated heavyweight has signed to fight in the HBO title unification series and he'll face Trevor Burbick, the WBC title holder, probably sometime this fall. And if Tyson should beat Burbick, he would become the youngest man in history ever to win the heavyweight championship. But first, as I reported last week, he has to beat Alfonso Rattler. step in the unification of the heavyweight title picture when WBC heavyweight champion Trevor Burbick takes on unbeaten Mike Tyson. Now Tyson of course is a chance to be the youngest heavyweight champion ever. He's been doing a good job. He's a good fighter. But now we meet me. I'm the champ. But don't bother me. You know, he's trying to get what I want, what I have. And um, that's enough for me to think about. When it really comes down to the facts, I really don't care what anyone expects. I'm capable and confident of my capabilities, and I'm sure of becoming the youngest heavyweight champion in history. Mike, you heard what uh, Trevor had to say about you. What do you have to say about him? After all, he is the champ. He's the best you've seen so far? Well, on paper, I guess he is, but if he happens to get knocked out in one or two rounds, then what can we say? <laughs>
Must be well pleased because he's glad, he's glad that he's got this fellow. And youngest and new WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Michael Tyson. At the moment, I waited for all my life since I started the game of boxing. But I was I was calm and I was timing my punch. Every punch I threw, I threw a bad intention in a vital area. I'm the youngest champion ever in the history of the sport. My record will last for immortality. It will never be broken. He was starting to hold on and just survive even as early as that. Well, I don't know about that. If that was so, that was his problem. I was coming to destroy and win the heavyweight championship of the world, which I'd done. And I'd like to dedicate my fight to my great guardian, Custom Auto. And I'm, I'm sure he's up there and he's looking and he's talking to all the great fighters and saying his boy did it. Punches are not made, they are born. He was born a puncher. It's just my nature. I mean, it, I mean to reach for you and take your heart or your blood or your spleen or your liver. place he's ever he, he ever used to find any peace in the world was in the ring i want to have a perfect fight i want to be the best fighter tyson mania struck the public it was almost as if tyson had become a mythical creature ending fights faster and more violent than anyone in history mike tyson like muhammad ali transcends the sport of boxing some say he's the absolute greatest and they would put prime tyson against anybody another day in the ghetto well, look outside, and I'm already upset. You, that round after round. Oh! He was a young phenom, rich, and now the baddest man on the planet. That era, like, it was a big part of my youth. When your fights would go on, it would be about, should I pay for this? Because how long is this going to last? No trunks, no socks, black shoes, all business. Talk about let's get it on. If heavyweight boxing wasn't, it wasn't boring again it was the the most crazy exciting thing in sports because I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be 19 years old 20 years old to be that fucking famous all of this at 20 years old no one had ever seen a sports star like this on top of the world tyson looked and felt untouchable One of Tyson's key opponents was boxing legend Larry Holmes. Holmes had beaten Muhammad Ali, Mike's role model. Ali was already severely damaged at this point in his career, but Ali got through doctors and took the fight anyway. He was beaten very badly, and some people judged Holmes extremely harsh for not taking it easy on the declining legend. It's scheduled for 12 rounds. It is an estimated $4 million game. The toughest ticket Atlantic City has ever seen. The reason, it's hoped 20 years from now, people will be talking about Tyson versus Holmes, and these people can say, I was there. And no road, black trunks, no socks, black shoes, all business. Talk about let's get it on. Listen, you know you got a bad job lead, right? I'm only 14, they put all that on me. That it is. <laughs> that guy is the revenge night finally came, and Tyson was ready to put on a show for his childhood role model, Muhammad Ali. 38-year-old Larry Holmes could not continue that round at the round. Oh, a big right hand, and down goes a former champion. He had to survive this round. He's definitely hurt, his legs are gone, and in comes Mike. It was a big right hand. Larry's down again. Down he goes. I don't have in trouble. It's just a matter of time. Larry will not survive this round. He's trying to fight back with everything he has. He's trying desperately. 
differently, but this is not the same age man that was able to do it against Ronaldo Stokes. He goes with a big right hand, should be hanging on. Now with a right hand, a left hand. He's got to hang on, and he'll stop the fight. Down he goes. Oh, he's hurt. It's all over. He is knocked out. And ends the career of the former champion of the world. Tyson was in his prime. But the buzz outside the ring was starting to seep into his personal life. After all, Mike was just a young kid who had came from poverty and achieved world fame practically overnight. Now, the true test of Tyson's character was about to begin. I'm a dreamer, and I'm a big dreamer. And when I start, I start dreaming, I get in a lot of trouble. I felt like Mike was kidnapped into the Don King cult and brainwashed. Don is a master of finding a person's weakness. Robin and Ruth decided that while the Sphinx fight was going to be taking place, they wanted to make sure that the moment the Sphinx fight was over and Mike had had his payday of $23 million, they wanted to make sure that they were in charge. And they did a very good job of convincing Mike that everything that had been done from up until that point was not in his best interest that the monies that were generated by Mike, he was getting cheated out of. And all of the things that they told him, given information to them by Don King, worked. Tyson was set to face Michael Spinks, a man who had never been knocked down in his career. The Tyson Spinks fight was labeled the biggest fight in boxing history. <laughs> Big moment for boxing. The biggest fight in boxing history by far. This is the greatest live gate in the history of professional sports. $12.3 million. By the time Tyson stepped back into the ring to defend his title against Michael Spinks, his life outside the ring was on the ropes. Tyson disposed of Spinks in 91 seconds. Tyson may have left Atlantic City with his title intact, but the drama surrounding the fight would continue. This lawsuit is brought by Mike Tyson. There were charges and counter charges. Mike asked me and his family asked me whether or not I'd help them in terms of representation, in terms of helping him to solve some of the problems that you're going to have as a 21-year-old fighter. History has said that oftentimes people or boxers or fighters or just athletes who have made millions turn around years later and wonder where it went. Strong power over his own destiny. He's got strong control over his own destiny. And I think that Mike and Bill working together are going to be really something over the next few years. Despite the public announcements, the struggle for control of Tyson's career would continue to unfold in the coming years, as with the turmoil in his personal life. And then there was the blow up between Mike Tyson and Robin Givens at the mansion in Bernardsville. In a nationally televised interview, Robin Givens told Barbara Walters that Tyson was a manic depressive, a charge that would later prove groundless. She also renewed her claim that Tyson beat her. Several days later, people were summoned to Tyson's mansion in New Jersey on a domestic disturbance call. And shortly after that, Robin Givens filed for divorce. With Robin gone, Tyson turned to his promoter, Don King, it was as if Mike Tyson went into a cult. And the cult leaders made him break off ties to all of his old friends. Despite all the outside noise, the controversy regarding his promoter, ex-wife, and all the pressure that comes with being an overnight superstar, Tyson continued his dominant reign. It's been more than a year since the sudden destruction of Michael Spinks. Tyson was able to compartmentalize and control his emotions when it came time to fight. Another devastating one-punch knockout. A ferocious left hook. Again, Mike, the interview has to be longer than the fight. 
about being in control of your career. Uh, tell us what you think is next. Who is next? Well, I'm just taking it one step at a time. I'll fight anybody. You know what I mean? I don't discriminate from anybody. I'm the best fighter in the world. There's no man that can right. beat me. Tyson looked unbeatable. But after all, how much can just one person take before cracking? Everyone is you. Mike Tyson versus Buster Douglas. Tyson was a 42 to 1 favorite. Before the fight, rumors had swirled about Tyson's mental and physical state. It was the most resistance Tyson had met to date. Back and forth, both landing hard shots, a high level chest. Pain. We've been looking for that all night. Oh, that's a nice uppercut that time. Tyson struck first in round eight with an uppercut. Two and three and four. But Douglas caught up. He'd been knocked down in sparring and didn't seem focused during training. He'd faced adversity in his personal life from day one, but never had his demons affected him in the ring. For the first time, the greatest champion of his generation had lost control in the one place he had always seemed to be able to maintain. And in round 10, Douglas shot the ring. The mythical fighter that was Tyson had fallen. The hardships became far worse for the champ. Even though there was a change of champion this year in boxing, the biggest story by far did not take place in the ring. It took place in a courthouse in downtown Indianapolis, where the former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson lost the biggest fight of his life to a 108-pound opponent. While Tyson remained confident, the prosecution case became more compelling. Explain to me now what you were thinking about the Mike Tyson situation. Mike Tyson was greeted at his door at 1 o'clock in the morning by a woman. He then... Well, we don't, we don't need to go through the well, case I again. Mean, I it's just... ridiculous. The woman was dancing at 8 o'clock, and this guy's in jail for six years. I don't understand it. I mean, their defense essentially was that anybody that goes out with Mike Tyson knows she's going to be raped, and therefore, Mike Tyson... This is his defense. I think it was a horrible job. They well, he... Another court case surrounded in controversy. Tyson always claimed innocence, and his defense team, provided by Don King, showed very little effort to show Tyson was innocent. Tyson was found guilty and sentenced to five years in prison. The biggest superstar was now in a jail cell during his prime. And there's no way I could have got it. I could have got a fair shot. I, mean, I knew I was innocent. I knew from court procedures and what was going on, but I knew when I was in that court and when I was going to get that verdict, I knew the verdict was going to be guilty because of the, the mentality of the court and the mentality of the prosecutor. It's showtime! Mike Tyson! Tyson, you saw abs when he came out of prison. Remember that? I guess so. When he fought Peter McNeely? Dude, he was prison jacked. That was like maybe the scariest Tyson ever. Like they finally <laughs> released him, and all he'd been doing in jail is working like, out. I don't think he could box in jail, so I think he was just lifting weights. And I'll never forget the fucking weigh-in or uh, the uh, stare down, rather, because during the stare down, Peter McNeely signed up for that fight, knowing that he's a tough guy who's going to take a fucking vicious beating. disqualification a minute 29 of round one money fame girls cars tyson had it all first stop on the tour mike's las vegas house the champ bought the home shortly after his release from prison in 1995. his unique personality and money were on full display buying tigers wrestling with them buying a new mansion partying after fights, but it wasn't a problem because Tyson was taking care of business in the ring. When you're 20 years old and all of a sudden you're the heavyweight champion of the world, just a few years ago you were poor, and now all of a sudden you're the king of the world. That's really crazy. 
You know, so young, it's really crazy. I, I was I, I was unable to handle it. I wasn't expecting that. That was a really sucker punch right there. Charlie <laughs> Murphy. That's a real sucker punch right yeah. there. I wasn't ready for that one. What made you think you could get a tiger? Like, how did that even happen? <laughs> hey, I, I'm, I'm in, um, this is right? really interesting. I'm, and so um, I'm in prison at the time. So I'm in prison. I'm talking to my car dealer. Cars that belong to a friend of mine that's both a friend of ours, and he's discussing if he doesn't pay for these cars, I'm gonna sell these cars to somebody and get some horses and stuff. I said, What, you can get horses and trade horses in for cars? Because I had a lot of cars, so I said, I'll probably get some horses too. <laughs> and he said, Yeah, man, you can get, you can get cougars, lions, tigers. I know this guy got exactly. I said, You do? Can you get me some tigers? <laughs> Tyson was back in line for a title shot. Tyson bought Frank Bruno for a second time for a title. You can't fix it, Jim. It was never great to begin with. Other night, Tyson. But Bruno comes forward. Seven seconds. He cut Bruno in the very first round. Here you see where Tyson wobbles him with a big right hand. Sure. Tyson's not going to let that alone. A few rounds later, he finished Bruno. He once again was the WBC heavyweight world champion. that Mike Tyson is back as a force of nature. Tyson went on to capture the WBA championship, another world championship belt. I was, I, I was unable to handle it. I wasn't expecting that. Tyson went on to fight Defender Holyfield, defending his titles. Holyfield stopped Tyson. He ended rematching Holyfield, but most of us know how that went. That's the jab Mike didn't have in the first fight. What happened here? He got bit, I think. Evander Holyfield, look out, he's pushed right here, above us, by Tyson. He had a parachute drop on him, now he had a heavyweight fight. Fight. What did we get that on, Jake? Fighting Holyfield in the right ear. Yeah, but he certainly had a big fight, and that's a dangerous fight. Two times. Mike was lost mentally. Even when he was champion, he didn't feel whole at times. Tyson was fined $3 million for the biting incident, and he was suspended. Mike lived it all, had it all, lost it all. After suspension ended, Tyson competed it again. Tyson was one of the best ever. Despite all outside noise, some say he's the absolute greatest. They would put prime Tyson against anyone. Mike Tyson truly was one of the absolute greats, not only in boxing, but sports. His fearless and ferocious mentality is really like no other. You can play football, you can play basketball, soccer or baseball, but you can't play boxing. Mike was a true testament to his killer mindset. The most vicious and brutal champion. The youngest world heavyweight champion in boxing history. Iron Mike Tyson. All great leads, my children, I love you. Oh, oh God, our oh man, what? I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their club. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. Are you saying now, Mike, to Mike?